To understand the physics of bungee jumping, we are going to divide the jump into three intervals. The first interval is the initial freefall of the jumper, while the cord is still slack. The second interval is while the cord is being stretched. The third and final interval is when the elastic cord is retracting. Our system is the bungee jumper. During all intervals, we'll neglect the effects of air resistance. During the first interval in free fall, the only force acting on the bungee jumper is gravity. This is what the force diagram would look like. According to Newton's first law, if there is an unbalanced force, and in this case, one single constant force, then there will be a constant acceleration. In this first interval, the bungee jumper will be speeding up with a constant downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration of gravity. When we reach the second interval, gravity is no longer the only force acting on the jumper. Because the cord is starting to stretch, it creates an upward force of tension. During this interval, the tension force is greater than the force of gravity. Thus, the acceleration is now in the upward direction, as seen in our force diagram. Because the jumper is moving downward, but the acceleration is upward, the bungee jumper is now slowing down with a constant acceleration. However, as the cord stretches, the force of tension increases. This leads to a non-constant force, which results in a non-constant acceleration. During the third interval, the elastic cord is retracting, causing the bungee jumper to fling upward. In the time before the cord reaches a length at which it is no longer taut, the bungee jumper is speeding up with an upward acceleration due to the greater force of tension from the retracting elastic cord. However, as we observed from the previous interval, the acceleration is not constant due to the decreasing force of tension from the cord. After, the bungee jumper will repeat this process over and over again. However, in real life, we cannot neglect air resistance, which is the reason the height of the bungee jumper's bounce decreases every time. Hypothetically, if there were no air resistance, the bungee jumper would continue to bounce forever.